the guru the guru sat before her disciples and and said my children we all must have ideals by which we live ideals are so important we all must have ideals and may they be lofty ideals and and one of the the disciples stood up and said but but guruji how do we live up to our ideals when the conditions of life are not always so ideal how do you live up to to your ideals when the conditions of life are not always ideal and the guru said ideal <laughs> thanks for listening to that joke okay chapter six six the lessons of love introduction this is the introduction to chapter six which is called the lessons of love the relationship of anger to attack is obvious but the relationship of anger to fear is not always so apparent. Anger always involves projection of separation, which must ultimately be accepted as one's own responsibility rather than being blamed on others. Anger cannot occur unless you believe that you have been attacked, that your attack is justified in return, and that you are in, are in no way responsible for it. Given these three wholly irrational premises, the equal, equally irrational conclusion that a brother is worthy of attack rather than of love must follow. What can be expected from insane premises except an insane conclusion? The way to undo an insane conclusion is to consider the sanity of the premises on which it rests. You cannot be attacked. Attack has no justification and you are responsible for what you believe. You have been asked to take me as your model for learning, since an extreme example is a particularly helpful learning device. Everyone teaches and teaches all the time. This is a responsibility you inevitably assume the moment you accept any premise at all, and no one can organize his life without some thought system. Once you have developed a thought system of any kind, you live by it and teach it. Your capacity for allegiance to a thought system may be misplaced, but it is still a form of faith and can be redirected. Okay, so anger cannot occur unless you believe that you have been attacked, that your attack is justified in return, and that you are in no way responsible for it. He's talking about the relationship of anger to fear. Okay, so why, why do we get angry? We, anger is a form of, again, it's, it's allegiance to the ego's thought system. Um, the, the way the ego, um, you know, the, e the way the ego thinks is, um, I have been attacked. I am justified in attacking in return, but I am not responsible, responsible for that attack. If it was the other that did it to me, I am righteous. I am. I am justified. Um, or someone else did something to me. I. I am justified in my anger. I. I um, am justified in attacking. And, and I. I don't take any responsibility. I am just the victim. Um. And Jesus is reminding us: you cannot be attacked. Attack has no justification, and you are responsible for what you believe. Um, anger is is merely, you know, Jesus is getting at anger is merely the the unwillingness to look within ourselves, and we want to, and we we always want to project the problem outside so that we do not have to look within ourselves at the, at the root cause, which is that we are not at peace. And because we are not at peace, we get angry, we get upset.
if we were at peace, we would not, we would not, um, there would be nothing to project outside of ourselves. We would see um, a world and a peaceful world, and we would, we we would um, go by the Holy Spirit's interpretation, which is that everyone is just learning the lessons of love. Um, that's the name of of this chapter. That we're all just learning the lessons that will bring us home again, and um, there's no reason to, there's no need to get angry. Anger is not justified. That doesn't mean not to get angry. It doesn't mean that you're bad if you get angry. It doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong if you get angry. It just means that we're learning to um, listen to what Jesus is saying and not try to justify our anger and sit and think that we're justified in being angry. Um, you have been asked to take me as your model for learning since an extreme example is a particularly helpful learning device, which is a way of saying Jesus was was horribly, you know, he died horribly. He was tortured. He was ridiculed. I mean, if you go by the Gospels, let's just let's just assume for a moment that they're true. Um, he was Jesus was um, un, unduly um, uh, ridiculed, uh, tortured, uh, killed. Um, and also, um, you know, he was put to, put to death for merely speaking the truth. Um, now if Jesus could lo still love everyone and everything, even with that happening, what about us who generally have far less <laughs> to deal with than that? You know, most of the time we are you know, our problems are much smaller. And if Jesus could do it, why can't we? Jesus is saying, I did it, I did it, and you can as well. If I could do it with that extreme case, you definitely can do it with all the little things that bring up the anger and the upset and the fear for you. The other thing, the point that Jesus wants to make before I sign off here, because I think my phone is going to die, is... Um, Everyone has to live by a thought system. We all we all live by a thought system, whether we know it or not. And and Jesus is trying to show us that there there's really two uh, main thought systems. There's the ego th thought system, and there's the Holy Spirit's thought system. Um, and and both are built on premises. Um, the ego's premise is we are able to separate from God. We are separated from God. And um, God will attack us. God is angry. God will punish us for for separating. And so we want to we we can't go back to God. We can't go back to the to the no knowledge of God because if we did, God would strike us down. That's the ego's thought system, and the ego is is there to perpetuate that th thought system as long as possible, and will do everything in its power to. Make sure that we never go against that. The Holy Spirit is separation from God is impossible. We have never been separate from God. We are still one with God. And God would never punish us because God is only love. And um, there, are, there is no sin. There is no guilt. There are only mistakes. Mistakes can be corrected. And mistakes aren't even mistakes because everything is, um, you know, according to a divine plan that we cannot understand. And so we can learn to surrender and accept or we can or we can live by the, the ego, you know, ego's thought system or we can live by the Holy Spirit's thought, thought system. It's up to us. So that's the introduction and we're going to the rest of the chapter will be, you know, uh, teasing this out and 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 filling out that introduction. Thank you for listening and uh, um, please feel free to leave a comment anytime. Thanks so much.